Hi, it's Xavier. Welcome to my Bonsai Retreat. Right now, it's about April the uh, 18th, there, thereabouts, and oh my gosh, let's look at my Japanese white pine. This is putting out so much candle growth, and uh, I've got, got one branch here that uh, didn't make it, but there's literally candles all over this. A little bit of wires have been moved about, probably because we've got the birds jumping about all over the garden, and they they land on some of these. So anyway, here we are. Middle April, probably the first month of spring. Ideal time to be pinching and uh, pinching back our candles on our mature, refined Japanese white pine. But am I gonna do that now? Here's the truth. Probably I could take off, say, just to balance energy. You look at this candle here. I've got a smaller one there, I could pinch it carefully twist and remove the candle and you know I could go right around this tree and it'd probably be fine but for those of you who followed my channel and in particular this Japanese white pine which I'll say I've had since the very beginning back in 2002 it was the, one of the first purchase trees that I got along with my large saplings incredible really to think that was just 50 pounds even more incredible is to think I actually didn't manage to kill it despite complete lack of understanding and lack of care of it which tells you a lot about just how hardy some of these trees can be. Now truthfully the reality is as you know this got potted back into this lovely ceramic uh, last September or late August so it got the, uh, the August repot and that's after two or three years of very very poor roots um, it was on the point of death four years ago and somehow luck or crook it's come through it's got through its first successful repot in many years and we've just got this lovely great growth and I'm a great one for, for respecting the fact that certainly with our mature pines as with a number of trees you insult them once in a year and hey this got a big insult last uh, last autumn so to speak so you know what I can do I can wait I'm gonna let these candles grow and why is that such a benefit? Well, more, more candles, more needles, more solar panels, more energy being directed down and reinvigorating that root growth that I need in a freshly repotted, sick Japanese white pine. So for me, no, nope, I'm gonna enjoy all the candle growth. It's gonna have flowers on as well. That takes a bit of energy. All I am gonna do is just make sure where we've got three candles, take them back down to two. But apart from that, I'm going to enjoy how brilliant this looks and, uh, and wait, probably, until uh, late August and uh, maybe then I might have a little look at the candles and do some work on them. But for now, no, leave it alone. Doesn't anybody believe me? What I will do though, is I have got a couple of branches. There's one branch I'm going to remove because it's dead. Um, I am going to just double check where the wiring is going on a few of these branches. Just make sure we've got our branches into the optimum position that we want. And uh, again, just look for where we might have, there you go, there's a dead branch in there. So we're gonna get rid of that one. With my wire cutters, wire cutters always good for branch. And then just reposition that one up, to fill the space. Just drop that down a bit. And truthfully, there's a lovely little one under here which is growing, so we'll let that go. I'm going to spread that out a little bit more and while I'm doing this of course I'm also checking to see if we've got any three candle points coming up and to be fair not really seeing anything like that now does this apply to all my pines because I'm not just looking at this one I've also got a mugo pine which again if you've seen my mugo pine series you know you know I made a point of saying these are trees in fact let's go have a look at it shall we actually hold things there before we go to the uh, the mugo let's um let's actually deal with what i was going to do and i did indicate a few minutes ago maybe on the screen that i was going to be wiring these branches down and i thought well i better show you so i've done two guys this has come off a root here which is firmly in place same here wrapped around a root these branches are still pretty brittle and um, so what i've done is done some just initial pulling down and again just using a tensioner just to I think that's called putting the tension on that's what you use a tensioner for anyway so that's starting to bring them down I've rewired a few of them 
Now what I do need to do next is just bring these down a bit. And then obviously, uh, I mean, I imagine these are gonna be on for at least a year, not a problem. Got some protective there. But overall, what I'm hoping for is more energy is drawn through via the candles and the working process there. Uh, tissue strength, and this will slowly hold in a more downward position. So let me just pull this down a bit and then I'll show you how it looks when we're done. Okay, well, I have compromised a little bit. I've done a little bit of wire repositioning on these branches here. Mainly, I've got the guy wires on these two here and I've also put one on the back to just bring this down. Um, I won't lie to you. Um, as I was doing a little bit of manipulation, I could hear some creaking and, uh, you know, initially I did. I thought it was my back, but I did remember that I think it's like on this branch. I'm sure, if I look back last year, um, one of those branches cracked and the fact that it's all nice and green that means that you know it's uh, it's doing all right but I certainly don't want to be putting loads of pressure here comes the Sun do 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 um, I'm probably flared out so that's what I've done I pulled them down a bit what I will do is although I'm happy to leave the candles down here what I don't want is too much energy going up the top so I am just going to balance the energy at the top here and just reduce candle sizes up here. And to be fair, I'm probably being a bit too conservative in not um, pitching back some of these candles, but hey, I can always, as I say, readdress it in the late summer. Right, so that'll do for now, I'm wittering away. Now, what I will say is that um, when last year's videos came out, Yellow of Growing Bonsai came up with um, what do you think I should have done further with the redesign up here, and it did involve taking away branches. In fact, rather than me describe it, I'll, I'll have a picture going on right now. And there is a number of branch removals, some question marks, and, and ways to really tighten this up and to take it to the next level. So that work will be happening, and thanks very much, Yella, for that. If anyone thinks otherwise or has any more suggestions between now and probably the uh, late August, early September when I'll be doing it, then please drop something down in comments. But anyway, I've blabbered on too long. We need to head over to the Mugo world, don't we? Those of you who followed my channel know definitely that with the Mugos, I originally had a couple that I got from a nursery, did a spring repot and managed to kill them within the first year. Uh, then I did some reading, certainly on uh, bonsai for me, Harry Harrington, and he'd reported having a lot of success with doing repots of these in the late summer. So these got initially repotted a couple of years back and uh, in the late summer, um, got styled last year, did a lot of branch removal. And so this is how it's looking now. So first of all, for those of you looking for updates on the Mugo Pine, well, there's one of them. The other one looks just as healthy. We've got lots and lots of candles all growing around it at different places. And uh, although it's, it's still at a very basic stage, it's healthy. It's enjoying the pond basket, certainly no desire to repot in the next few years. I'm now looking at continuing to grow the roots so that I can build this back. What could I do right now? Well, what I can do is with Mugo Pine, I think I might have actually said in, in my last thing about Mugo, it's a case of any time you see a candle, and that being the candle here, which is substantially bigger than all those around it, which if you compare it to these ones, much, much smaller, half the size, you look at it and really the, uh, the ruling, arbitrary ruling that is, is that if that ever grows to sort of an inch to an inch and a half, then you just take the top off it to stop it growing any further. And that will hopefully send energy to all the different bud points that you want. Now that's probably approaching uh, an inch. So what I could do is just take the top off it like that. Probably the only place I do need to look at with this one is the top here. We've got one, two, three. Now I don't want three up there. What I'll probably do, I could either remove this little small one here or the big one, but I'm going to take that one there out. Just break it off carefully. And that will now leave one two. That one is um, is extending but in this instance I'm happy because that's the leader to let that keep going up. Again as with all the pines you then have an option if you miss this to go all the way back when you get to the end of uh, the summer and cut right back down to you know I wanted to 
if this was fully extended and these needles had all come out I could cut it all the way back to here just leave three four five needle pairs and that'd be great and uh, we'll get new bud points coming from there um, these are back budding very well and uh, a later stage of the year I'll talk to you about how I get better back budding but right now truthfully this just needs to continue to grow and be healthy so that's really all I'd be doing with my Mugo Pones right now my Mugo Pones my Mugo Pines so yeah so the, the, the key takeaway with the Mugo Pine for me is that if that candle has got beyond an inch in height then I take the top off that then tells the tree to send the uh, energy around the other smaller smaller uh, pine candles um, and apart from that again this is definitely definitely in development I do want lots of growth so we'll monitor it only other thing fertilize it definitely fertilize it so now we look at this next pine I've got three or four like this Scots pines and uh, I made the mistake to be honest of putting them into these little containers two or three years ago wiring them up and thinking I can turn this into a great bonsai and you know maybe over a very very long time I could what I really should have done is um, concentrate on getting good root development, thickening it right up, and then considering it, bringing it back into a bonsai thing. But, but whatever. As it stands right now, could I do some needle, needle pinching? We've definitely got some, uh, we've got three coming from the same point, so I could remove a needle. It's a candle. But truthfully, anyone here want to put their hand up and say that this is uh, a finished product? No. This is well and truly in development, and uh, if anything, it's in stunted development or arrested development. Is that a band name? I don't know. Someone tell me in the comments. So what am I really gonna do? Well, I want those candles to extend. Where there's three candles at one place, obviously I'll reduce it to the two best candles, but no, I just want growth. I want this tree to optimize the opportunity to get needle growth, which allows more sunlight, conversion of energy, greater roots, and eventually then that's going to lead to some more budding back budding and stuff like that but right now early spring developmental scots pine leave it alone fertilize it let it grow the only time i might consider it is if i had a branch or something that was just growing too far in the wrong direction but even then you know if you look here this has been left alone there's, there's only two or three candles on it it isn't very strong but truthfully, the decision shouldn't be difficult because if you've got this situation, we've got one candle here, one here, one here, this should be absolutely sprouted, a bit like that Japanese white pine you've just seen. On here, you've got a very, very weak back bud here, one, one, two. This tree really does need to put on a lot of growth and a lot more vigor. So you see stuff like this, you've just got to leave it, let it grow, put loads of fertilizer in it, and let this thing really push out. And I think that's probably the message for anything in this sort of format. You gotta build it, and to build it, get those roots right first. So I would be expecting to see a lot more foliar growth uh, and branches before I'd even consider really looking at candle pruning or anything like that. Up here though, it's nice. We've got a lot more buds up here, but really nothing that's gonna you know, make me sing and dance all the way to the uh, the dance hall, so to speak, even up here. Yeah, I've got one up here that's got three from the same point, so I'm just gonna remove that one. So, yeah, the Scots pine looks like this. It's nice enough, it's got nice movement, but leave it, we'll revisit this again, like we will with the Japanese white pine in the late summer, early, early autumn. Now we've got this Scots pine and it has been mentioned in, and now I think there's been a video on it initially last year or in 2022 when uh, Kenneth Bond and I had a, a collaboration going and that is still ongoing and there's a lot more work to do on this, uh, this Scots pine but this has had to go through the stages of the one you've just seen. I tried to do too much work on it when it really wasn't healthy enough, it didn't have enough roots or anything and so was struggling to put out any sort of candle growth at all. This one, on the other hand, we've got a lot bigger and more vigorous candles. This, you've got loads of candles all around here, which is absolutely incredible and exactly what I needed. Can I do anything with this? Yeah, I can actually. Here's an example. One, two, three. I'm actually gonna remove the middle one, like that. I could have probably plucked that. And I might just balance the energy on that one 
by doing that. Um, and hopefully that's going to drive energy elsewhere. And also, because this hasn't been repotted or anything in the last year or so, although it's young, I can, you know, quite reasonably do a little bit of work on it. But, alas, I like to do all my pine work in the latter part of the summer. So, probably won't see much from this. The only thing you will see me doing, which is what I've just been doing, just making sure where there's twos. There's three on this one here. So again, I'll take out the middle one here where we've got a stub, clean that up. Still got to make decisions about what's going on down here. But as I say, let's not ruin the fun. This is going to be in a later video sometime in the year. But uh, yeah, so that's an example of one. This is an example of one that's a little bit older, certainly not refined or anything like that, but where you could actually do a little bit of energy redistribution by plucking the candles. Equally, wait later on in the year and then you can come along with these great big long extended candles and cut right back to two or three needle pairs of the new growth. But we'll look at that at a later time. Here's one more pine we can talk about. Can't believe it. Can you guess what it is though? I finally have black pines and again those of you who watch my channel know that this one came courtesy of uh, Jason Hanrahan of the Bonsai Garden. A lovely lovely gift. Um, still got the wire on that I got from last year. Uh, not by its skin, not bothered. In terms of black pine, uh, it technically comes under the double flush category. Um, most of my bonsais come under the flush category, but we won't talk about that. So what it really means is that in the most ideal conditions, i.e. in the more uh, Japanese conditions where you get completely different humidity and growth, growth conditions, you can get two growth, two, two flushes of growth. I don't have a lot of experience with these, I haven't seen it, but what I do know right now is that all I want from these, because these are diddly, is growth. I want these candles to push out. And how do I know that? Well, I only have to go down the road to Alex's place and he's got a load of pines and these candles are sending out miles and miles and miles. So truthfully, if you've got something that looks like this, let it grow. What you can do is the same thing as you do with all the pines. If you've got three, three candles growing from the same point, then remove one of them. And in fact, we've got that very situation occurring down here. So, I'm going to leave the big one, but perhaps take one of the small ones. Let's get in close and have a look. Hard to tell, but this great big candle here is actually coming from the same point as two other little candles there. I still want this to continue to grow up. I need this to thicken a lot. This will eventually potentially be a sacrifice. So I'm actually going to remove one of the smaller ones and in this instance, I don't think it really matters a lot which one I take away. So I'm just going to pick one. That's potentially going to be the inside of a bend. So I'll get rid of that one. So I've just removed one of those candles. There it is. In terms of the wire, am I worried? No. Um, there's no wire marking or scarring. We have got one, two, three, four from the same point. I haven't yet decided whether the line of this tree is actually going to follow the bend in the curve around, up, and then coming down, and this actually being the main. Um, I think we could probably safely remove. We could probably safely remove both of these. Actually, in fact, I'm going to remove one of them. Let's do that, shall we? Because we are going to get swelling. That's a strong one. Let's just get rid of this one for now. I'm not thinking about styling right now. I'll have a look at that again in the midsummer. Midsummer is when we revisit the candles and potentially cut them right back to little stumps, but we'll deal with that later. So that's what I've done, remove that potentially. I could sort of play around with the wire a little bit, but uh, really we need to see lots and lots of uh, growth from this and to play around with this later in the midsummer. And that's the time we're going to be returning to our black pine. Because in midsummer, we are potentially cutting all the new candle growth right back to the base. But more of that in a later video. And in fact, with that in mind, if you've liked my little foray into the uh, spring work for my uh, pines, then please, big thumbs up. If you think anyone might benefit or might just enjoy seeing me um, warble around in this, uh, this little bonsai retreat of mine, then share it by all means. And of course, I ask you humbly to subscribe. Oh, and these, well, these, this is one 
of the uh, black pine seedlings that uh, Tony um, passed on to me, uh, God rest his soul. Got a little bit of wire on there, one big candle on it, we'll let that go. We need this to be, I want that candle to grow one, two feet, really thicken this up, so I'll leave this alone. Don't, don't be too much of a hurry to try and bend lots of little shapes in there. I'm quite happy as that thickens, the wire will get grown into it and it'll get all nice and gnarly. So that's really all I'm gonna be doing with pine um, this time of the year. Um, the next real major time, as I keep saying, is gonna be mid to late summer, early August. So if you've got any questions about pines, then please whack it down in the comments. I'm doing my best to answer it. I'm still learning myself, but uh, if you are nervous, just watch what I do, wait a year. If my tree hasn't died, then it's probably a good thing to follow. If it's died, well, you're probably not watching my channel anyway. He needs help. So, from Xavier, hope you've enjoyed this. All the best. Happy Bonsai and God bless. Cheers.